Hi everybody, I hope you're doing great and I'm very excited to bring you the third installment in the Intuitive Development series. Originally I'd planned this one to be the Crystals video, I'm going to put that at number four. Instead I wanted to talk about tarot cards, which makes perfect sense for this channel since that's what I focus on quite a bit here. And part of the reason I decided to do it was uh, this month in particular I decided to experiment around with the formats. This of course really sparked a discussion about cards and and it just got me inspired to talk about how cards work, what they mean to me, um, and how they played a role in my intuitive development. So that's what this video is going to be about, and I hope you enjoy it. I know as I've talked to clients and even read some of the comments and questions over the past five years or so, there's been a lot of questions like, how do I get, how, how did you get started? How do I get started? How do you learn? Uh, how does this work? So I'll try to go through some of this today. And I'm also going to give you, we'll, we'll begin with sort of like the uh, the last stages of my waking up and that's when I picked up cards and that really helped catapult everything into a new direction. So, um, so let's start there and again I hope you enjoy this video. So let's talk a little bit about how I started to wake up and how cards played a role in that. Now I think I talked a little bit in the first video how when I first started to feel things and sense things it was sort of like this um, electroshock to the system and overwhelming sort of sensations. I couldn't discern what my energy was, what other people's energy was, all of that. Uh, there were some blessings though during that period and one of those blessings included past life flashbacks. I started to see what I did in previous lives and how I knew certain people in previous lives. And I don't recall how many, I think it was maybe between 10 and 12 flashbacks that I had. I should write them all down sometime and I might talk about that in a future video. Um, but one of those past life flashbacks and one that kept coming sort of as a recurring dream or I kept seeing pieces of it was that uh, I saw myself, I think it was in France, and uh, I was on, I was walking through a field and I saw a, a bunch of tents that were still up and it looked like there was a fair or something in, in the area. Uh, and there was a lot of sort of debris on the ground and I was picking up a few cards that either I had dropped or had been sort of scattered by the wind. And now I recognize the deck as the Marseille deck uh, or something like that, or traditional sort of playing card deck. It wasn't even tarot. But I felt a really powerful affinity when I saw the cards. And I woke up and I thought, that's interesting. And, um, and then I started to see cards as I walked around Los Angeles. Now it's worth mentioning that these were not tarot cards, they were playing cards like you would have in any standard deck where you would use it to play poker or whatever. Um, so I would see Queen of Hearts, Three of Spades, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this happened for a few months, just random places. I could be at a bus stop. I could be at the gas station. I could just be walking and they'd be in the grass. And um, anyway, I, I kept seeing them for several months. And then what really brought it home was when I found a tarot card when I was in a fitting room uh, and I was trying on some clothes and then I looked at the bench and there was the Hierophant card there. And uh, I didn't know what it was at the time, but I just, I thought this is, this is more than a coincidence. You know, it was probably the fifth or sixth time that I'd been running into cards, and then now it's finally tarot. So at that point, I decided, let's get a reading. Uh, we're very blessed here in LA. There's a lot of great intuitive bookstores. And uh, I went online and I looked at some videos of some of the readers, and I found one that really resonated with me for whatever reason, and went in, had a reading, and it was a, a guy, his, he was amazing. I knew he was psychic in addition to being a tarot card reader, but, uh, but he kind of downplayed that. And the way he approached the cards were, it, it, it wasn't sort of the, a big deal. It was a conversation and he used them as tools. And ve he very much affected my style as a reader. Uh, I eventually took a class with him and studied for like three months. And what I loved about that sort of journey is we didn't just study cards. He introduced us to other things. We tried like scrying in a mirror. We looked at crystals. We looked at we, we did guided meditation. It's kind of what I do on, on, a, on a certain level here. I like to explore everything. And, um, and this was one way to get into intuition. And that was something that I wanted to talk about. Uh, and it was part of what inspired me this past month. And this is going to be up here for a while. So um, disregard it if you notice now that they're back to the old format. But I tried experimenting with just talking to you and not necessarily showing the cards. And it was interesting at the reaction because what I found is people sometimes need or want to see the image, even though as a tarot reader, I may not any longer be sort of only looking at the card and its prescribed meanings. 
what it becomes is kind of like, do you remember those uh, paintings that, that used to, you have to stare at it and you would see something beyond that? It was, they were kind of like scattered patterns and then something else would come out. The more you work with cards, the more you see through the cards, beyond the cards, around the cards, and I see something and then all of a sudden something else comes up in my mind. And so if I'm pulling up an Empress card, sure, it could be about, you know, you could be a business owner, it could be about motherhood, it could be about um, control issues in your life. It could also be something completely, uh, you know, left of center that just comes through and, and I think, you know, how did that come, come up? And, it's your intuition and there's no way that you can just get that by the card alone or even its arrangement that's the magic of the like kind of using tarot is i see them as an alphabet and just as you can take uh three letters like owl o-w-l you rearrange it you get the word low um you know you can and there's so many other words that one just came to to mind so same thing with the cards different arrangements different situations different states of mind um, you start to see different things. So anyway, uh, that experience really changed me. And I realized that I was going to be okay. I would be able to kind of have now this magical key that would allow me to access my intuition without fear. And that's a second piece that I want to get into, which is when I first started to wake up, I talked about this in the first video, I had this moment where I just felt overwhelmed and I now realize why the universe was giving me these signs and symbols and why they connected me to my first teacher. It was so that I would have something as a grounding stone. And that's ultimately what tarot became for me was a way for me to have this sort of healthy distance between what I was trying to understand and then the tools of my own intuition and my body and using that as a sort of sandbox so that I didn't have to directly get too deep into myself or too deep into the situation. Um, so there's this natural detachment that comes when you use the cards. And that's actually a very, very good thing, especially for me because I'm empathic, meaning that I feel other people's energies and emotions if I get connected too much. So when I read with the aid of the cards, it allows me to use my higher self, the cards, which is connected to spirit, and with permission, then I look at other areas of people's lives and situations. but the energy sort of stays in the cards. And as I bless the cards, shuffle them, and then put them to the side at the end, I no longer have a connection to that person. And so there's a very, that's, that's the wonderful part of that tool. And so for me, tarot was something that removed fear. It gave me empowerment. It helped me understand esoteric meanings and go deeper into spirituality. And, um, and also to sort of, again, really embraced the fact that I was intuitive, psychic, whatever you want to call it, uh, that I was finally taking this serious and seriously enough to go and get training, to buy a bunch of cards, to practice. And initially, I didn't even know why I was doing all of this. I just had no other choice but to do it. And it felt like it was the right thing to do. And so my journey to tarot wasn't something that I ever, I was never fascinated as a kid. Um, I don't think I really knew much about them growing up and, and as a young adult. Uh, and I, I think after my first reading, there was a little bit of piqued interest. I'd only had maybe two random readings in my life. And then of course, once I started to learn, I saw other intuitives because I like to see how they work. I like to test my own intuition. And so I've, I've been to a lot of readings now, but there was a point in my life where I'd only been to a couple and just really didn't have understanding for it. But the cards, once you pick up a deck, it, there's something magical about it. And that is what woke me up. Now, the third thing that I want to kind of talk about is when are you ready to do this? So for me, again, it was empowerment. There were signs from the universe. I had past life flashbacks and I strongly believe that I was a reader before. I think I, I read in Paris uh, and whether it was, uh, I, I feel like I kind of did it underground. So if you want to call that a gypsy, you can call it a gypsy, but I was using cards that weren't specifically tarot. They were hidden as playing cards um, because it's always been something that people have misunderstood. So anyway, this was something that was part of my DNA, part of my past, also part of my present and future. I've always been active with some form of um, divination. And all one, one other thing I should say, all of my past lives, I saw different holy lives, whether it was um, you know, a monk, a nun, uh, a shaman, an astrologist. Time and time again, I saw a connection to this sort of 
holy life. And that's why the Hierophant came to me. And that's what the universe was saying. Uh, you, you still are supposed to be a teacher. You're still supposed to be putting this out there. So when should you pick up a deck of cards? There's no right or wrong time. But what I would say is you shouldn't be afraid of them. When I first purchased my uh, initial deck of tarot cards, it was the traditional Rider Waite Smith deck and none of the special variants that I use now. It was just a traditional deck. And I think I still, I have a large one now and I'll pull that up at the end and I'll show you a couple of my favorite decks. But um, when I looked at that initially, I, was, I wasn't comfortable with the imagery yet. And it was because of some negative experiences in my past and just some, I didn't understand how it all worked. So that's when I decided to go to, uh, to get a reading. And then I, after I got the training, I was totally ready and I understood how everything worked and it was no longer sort of mystifying. I think it's worth educating yourself, picking up a few books and maybe in a future series, uh, I will recommend some books and resources. This one is just an overview about my journey, but I will do that in a future series. Um, but I would say get picking up a really good book and getting maybe taking a class or a seminar with somebody just so that you can understand how it all works together. And then if you still are interested and you still feel comfortable, pick up a deck that works for you. You don't have to get any, there's so many now, I don't know, hundreds of different types of decks. Um, go and look at the imagery. There are some bookstores that let you see open versions of them, um, or you can go on Amazon and look at the images and see which ones speak to you. That's the right deck. And then and only then should you go forward. Otherwise, you might kind of be like I was at the beginning and I tossed mine away. <laughs> I wish I had saved that deck um, because uh, I would totally use it now. But originally I bought it, I thought I'm not ready for this and I threw it in the trash. Um, then it was, again, it was months later that I thought, okay, I, st I still have to do this. I was just afraid. It was just a lower frequency emotion coming through. And when I overcame that, I felt so empowered and I thought, oh, this is why I was trying to do it. So. Educate yourself a little bit on it. Find something that resonates. Find someone um, that you can trust to help teach you or talk through some of the questions that you have and then have fun. And that's sort of that that was that would be my advice now if I were to talk to someone uh, as they were going into this. Now, what has Tarot sort of meant to me along this journey? It's been amazing uh, for me. It gave me a sense of self-confidence because when I use cards, and now even when I don't use cards, when I'm in a reading, I'm using a different part of me that I never used before. So they're great for building trust and confidence within yourself. And they are the little keys that will unlock your intuitive potential. Much in the same way that astrology does, runes do, and any other sort of divination method that you want to kind of connect to can do. Even crystals can, can unlock things. I've seen people that can read with just stones, which is amazing. So, uh, and of course, whether it's tarot or playing cards or you make your own, because that's really what Crawley and uh, Rider Waite Smith, the, those kind of combined uh, partnerships, they just came up with their own symbols. So it's completely possible and even encouraged to create your own symbols. That's what Oracle decks are. Um, and so one way to develop your intuition is you could cut pictures out of magazines, write words on them, put them on index cards, and you can make your own deck cheaply. Um, and it will be just as effective, if not more so, because you're using your own symbology. These are just really uh, vetted out decks and approaches, and all of the symbols work. And because people have been using them so long, there's a lot of energy in them. And as you get more and more attuned to that energy, you can tap into that and see things. I think that everybody has the ability to connect to intuition and everyone can grow that skill, but they have to trust themselves. Cards help you trust yourself. And that's where the, the magic sort of exists. If you believe in yourself, if you believe in the cards, you then open up the channel and you're able to connect to intuition. And the more you trust yourself, the more that the cards shift in role, that you don't have to just look at the book definitions. You start to develop a relationship and new meanings for yourself. And so I may read certain cards a way that no one else does, and that doesn't make their style or my style more or less accurate. It means that we've gone further into the symbols or in different paths into the symbols than one another, and 
we found out something else, which is beautiful. And uh, ultimately, I believe that you can completely work without the aid of any divination tool. And we already see that with mediums that can do like uh, trans mediumship. Uh, I talked about being able to pick up objects and, and read information off the, of them or spaces or connect with the dead or spirits and all of that. So you don't need cards to do that. In fact, sometimes it, it hinders that because you really need to just listen and observe and connect and see. So that's sort of where I'm at with cards at this point in my practice is I use them when I need them. I don't when I don't. And we have this happy relationship where it's kind of like a good friend that I can pick up and talk to. And that's sort of and I do talk to the cards. I think it's important when you ask questions. I, I will if you ever get a reading with me, you'll hear me ask the cards out loud as if as I'm shuffling as if they were right there. So I'll say, show me what you know, and I'll ask the question and I look and I see the answer. So I treat them with respect. I treat them as if they have a personality and a presence. But I ultimately know I'm talking to myself and I'm talking to my higher self. And that's kind of how I view the cards. So I'm here physically and my ego is here. I talk to the cards, but the cards are really higher self and spirit. And sometimes spirit's moving, you know, moving me to pick the, the cards. And that's, that's the other piece. People wonder, how does that work? You go through a deck that you're holding and as you, I do something like this where I just pull it and then I can find the card that I'm looking for, but I kind of go through it. I usually pull from the center, sometimes from the top, and the, but I like to kind of go into a place where I don't know where it's at and I feel until I'm ready and then I pick it up. So that's something that I do. And that's a way of really getting intuitive. So I just know that I'm going to pull the cards that I need to pull. I don't question it. It works and I feel it. For everybody, that connection is going to be a little bit different, but that's how it works for me. And I really don't intellectualize it that much because you can't intellectualize intuition. Intuition is beyond book knowledge. It's just knowing. And so the less you think about it, the more it's going to work. And that's kind of my little piece of advice here is just trust it. One piece that I want to kind of continue going back on, though, is there is no uh, right or wrong way to access your intuition. If you choose to use cards or if you choose to use just your raw mediumship skills, it doesn't make you more or less psychic. It just is a choice. And again, I think the more that you kind of get skilled, the more that you have more choices at your disposal. And that was one thing that I was hoping to kind of illustrate this month as I was showing a different approach. Again, if you, if you see this in the future, you can disregard it. But what I was just trying to show is that you can use or not use, you can show or not show cards and that doesn't make you more or less psychic. In fact, for those of you that decide ultimately that you wanna be an intuitive reader and have a session with someone, it's actually better to not go through every single card. If they ask if their boyfriend is cheating on them or if this career path is the right path or um, what's wrong in their life right now, you should be able to look at the cards and start to hit some high level things. You could say, it looks like you're stressed out. It looks like this person isn't ready to commit. It looks, and, and you should just be able to kind of go there because some people don't know what the Queen of Cups in reverse is or why the Seven of Swords is there or what this Devil card is about. And when you say all of these things, it's sort of like if you've ever gone to a doctor and all they do is kind of throw out this technical jargon. So I think there's a happy medium between t talking about the symbology when appropriate and then overwhelming them and no only talking about symbology. So I, am, I much prefer just hearing and understanding what's going on because then it becomes like a conversation with a real person and the cards and the symbols are there for, uh, for a backdrop, but they were just what helped me see the pattern. So before I wrap up, I would like to highlight two decks that I would recommend for people that are starting out. The first one is this and it's called the Radiant Rider Weight Tarot. And it's almost identical to a traditional Rider weight, except the illustrations are like 100% better. And let me show you a kind of cross sampling here. So here we have the traditional Rider weight Smith. Um, it's the giant form, but it's actually great for this because you can kind of see the colors. They're, they're a little washed out. There's not a lot of variety. A lot of the uh, sketches are very basic. And if you then take a look at this uh, beautiful Radiant deck, you'll see that there's so much more detail in each of these illustrations, like amazing, much more shading, much more approachable. Uh, and 
like even the Sun card here, it really looks nice. You're going to get everything that you need uh, as far as understanding the basic symbology here. And, and the quality of illustration is just much, much, much better. So I would recommend that your starting deck is this. Uh, and you can get it on the Amazon store and you can follow the link if you want to support my channel um, on my website and that will, uh, that will help me out as well. The other one here is, this was the one I actually learned with, was Robin Wood Tarot. And uh, it's not Robin Hood, it's Robin Wood. And it has beautiful kind of Celtic embellishments on the back of the, the cards and a very different approach to the symbology. But um, in the same way that I like the other deck that I just showed you, um, beautiful, beautiful illustrations, even like this card, which can be very off-putting for some clients, death is quite nice in this deck. There's not a skeleton riding on a horse with people scattered on the ground. It's got a, a rose behind it. Uh, and that's actually on the original Rider Waite Smith deck. But what we see here is death and rebirth, and it's in a forest. So that's kind of showing the whole cycle of life. But anyway, these are two of my favorite. I think you should learn with this. Um, I, I don't know why I, <laughs> I started with, with Robin Wood. I just really liked, I actually think I really liked the illustration. The magician's amazing. And I like the sort of, um, yeah, I just, I love, I love the illustrations. I love the different take on, on the classic here. But start with something traditional. And then if you do this, you'll be able to do anything. And these are, I've moved beyond these. I have a lot of other decks, but if I had to choose one that I would take with me everywhere, it would be this because it's universal, it's easy, uh, it, it, it can kind of, I can read for every situation with it, and that's evidenced by the fact that it's like really worn. You can see <laughs> I've used this one, and I, uh, this is actually a backup one. I just purchased a new one, and this is my second version of this. I have another one in, uh, in the other room here that's equally as worn out. So that's usually a good sign if I completely wear out a deck that, um, <laughs> that I found a winner. But anyway, these are two great starter decks. I would not recommend going to a traditional Rider Waite Smith deck um, unless you really like the imagery. I just find that they're not, as, uh, they're not as detailed or as colorful as what you're going to find um, in this deck. But again, this is, this is what I would start with because as you look at this magician, there's a lot of differences in Robin Wood. It's beautiful, but it should be probably your second, third, or fourth deck. Uh, and let me also cover something here that's a misconception. I don't know how many times I've heard this and it just makes me crazy, but um, you do not have to receive your first deck as a gift. I did not. Um, if I did, I'd still be waiting to receive it. So I think that you pick up a deck when you want to. Some people, that means they're gifted one. You may be in a part of the world where you're not going to have a teacher or friend or someone that reads. I think that is not a reason that you can't start. So go find one that you like. Educate yourself about what the cards are and then start to learn. That's all. That brings this third installment of the Intuitive Development series to a close. I'll be doing crystals in the next one. I think I'm going to do a Q&A one maybe as the um, fifth one. Uh, I'll continue to kind of update you as I go through the series of different things that uh, I think would make sense. And I'll also ask you for some advice as well as appropriate. If you like this, please feel free to donate because that's what makes this possible. And especially now as I'm doing longer form videos, um, I will need more support from you guys because it takes more time to do that. And that takes me off the grid when I could be doing an appointment or something else. So I'm trying to get this out there, but I do need support back if it's something that you like. Um, if you haven't already done so, like and subscribe to this channel. I would love for you to follow me on social media, especially Instagram. Um, I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, and I try to share sometimes unique things to each of those uh, different platforms. So if you're not following me on one, try to follow me on it because uh, like on Twitter, for instance, I will put all of the text for the channeled information. And I don't necessarily do that on all platforms all the time. And um, Instagram, I do some one-off videos sometimes and Facebook as well. Uh, I will try to do live events sometimes. So it's good to follow me across all if you can. I'm also here for you if you would like to schedule a reading or simply talk about your intuitive development. To do either of those things, you want to follow the link below the video uh, that says schedule an appointment. You can check out my rates and availability there. And finally, I just want to say thanks. The whole reason I'm doing this is for development and I'm putting my money where my mouth is here on this and I really want to make sure that you get what you can out of this series and I'm so happy that I can bring it to you. Take care of yourselves. Wishing you love and light. Thank you again for being you and working on yourself.